Well. Let me just check on my phone. It's um, should be on live now. Yeah. It is says it? so actually on the Zoom. Yeah, because it says uh, the, the Zoom says meeting is now uh, streaming on Facebook. Well, I'm a big one for starting on time. So should we just go ahead and start? Yeah, great. Yep, sure. Great. There's a couple more people. So welcome to Ask Sustainable Asia's post Camelar briefing. My name is Marcy Trent Long. I'm the executive producer of the Sustainable Asia podcast. And this live stream wraps up our season 10 on the podcast titled, Will China Save Antarctica's Oceans? And we're really lucky today to have our guests from Beijing, Jilian Chen, senior researcher at Greenovation Hub, and Zhou Wei, senior oceans campaigner at Greenpeace East Asia. Um, we're really excited to have many friends in China joining us through a VPN free Zoom link alongside our listeners outside China watching on Facebook Live. So good morning to the Americans. Enjoy your lunch in London, and thank you for staying up so late here in Asia. If you have any questions, you can either put them into the chat box here in Zoom in Mandarin or in English, or you can send them to uh, our Sustainable Asia Facebook Messenger, or you can put in hashtag, hashtag Ask Sustainable Asia and put that into, post that in Facebook. We'll receive it any three ways. You could also kind of yell out and scream and we'll answer the question. Um, this will be a, a super interesting webinar, I think. Let me give you a brief introduction of what we're gonna cover. Um, ocean conservation followers were hoping that three new marine protected areas around Antarctica would be approved during the 39th annual meeting of the Commission for the Conservation of Antarctic Living Resources, CAMELAR, last month. The meetings were online and with a shortened agenda that gave little time for MPA discussions. The delegates will meet again the same time next year, and that meeting will coincide with the 60th anniversary of the Antarctic Treaty. It will also, we hope, be the year that China hosts the UN Biodiversity Conference that was delayed this year due to COVID. China didn't align their support for new marine protected areas during CAMELAR meetings this year, despite new research led by Chinese scientists that confirmed that warming seas are making Antarctica krill, that small crustacean critical to the marine life there in Antarctica, these krill are now migrating to colder waters. So the question of this webinar is, will China, one of the largest krill fishing nations in the world, put aside its fishing interests to protect the Southern Ocean at Camelar meetings next year? So we're first going to have um, Joe Wei, the senior oceans campaigner, again, at Greenpeace East Asia. And she's going to talk to us about Chinese fishing interests first. We'll have some Q&A. And then Jillian will talk a little bit more about Camelar. Thank you, Marcy. I'm going to share my uh, slide. Can you see my slides? Yep. Yeah. Thank you, Marcy, and uh, thanks everyone for joining us tonight today. Um, I will briefly introduce uh, China's decent water fisheries and China's Antarctic creel fisheries. Um, Antarctic creel fishery is a type, is a part of China's overall decent water fisheries. China's decent water fishery started in 1985, and so it's uh, 35 years old now. Uh, this chart shows the growth of China's decent water fisheries. Um, you can see that before 
2015, there was a rapid growth, but after 2015, it's become more stable. And by the year 2019, China owns about 2,700 uh, decent water fishing vessels, and now China is one of the world's largest uh, decent water fishing nations. Um, so uh, in the past few years, there were a lot of news reports about the China's uh, uh, illegal fishing activities conducted by Chinese fishing vessels. This has uh, caught a lot of international attention and caught a lot of attention uh, from the Chinese government. So the Chinese government has taken a lot of measures to revise the laws and uh, strengthen the management uh, to combat the IUU fishing activities. Uh, the 35-year plan of the Decent Water Fisheries Development has set uh, clear targets to control the size of the fleet. Uh, the government has also taken a, a package of uh, actions to strengthen the management system and show the zero toler tolerance to the IOU fishing. Uh, for example, they revised the many management regulations and set up new rules for the transshipment um, management and conduct conducted self-disciplined monitoring of fishing, uh, squid fishing in the East uh, Pacific and the Southwest Atlantic. Um, regarding uh, Antarctic krill fisheries, China started it uh, about 10 years ago, around 2009 to 2010. And in the year 2018, uh, the total catch from China's Antarctic krill fishing is about 40 hundred tons and it, it was China was the second largest uh, uh, fishing nation of Antarctic Creole in the year 2018. Um, this total catch has accounted for about 15% uh, of the world's total Creole catch and 2% of the total catch of China's uh, distant water fisheries. Uh, the 35th year plan also um, uh, set a direction for the Antarctic krill fishery, for China's Antarctic krill fishery, uh, as actively develop the Antarctic living resources. And with this guidance, in the past few years, we have, um, we have seen a very strong compliance of China's uh, Antarctic krill fishing activity. Uh, we also see uh, new expansions, for example, new vessels were building and uh, will join the uh, Antarctic Creole fisheries in the maybe next in the next few years. We have also noticed uh, uh, a strong willingness to uh, improve the efficiency. For example, the new vessels are equipped with new fishing uh, technologies and new processing uh, equipment. Um, another pro progress uh, worth to mention is it's not from the government. Is uh, from the industries. Uh, in the year 2018, uh, the Chinese uh, crew fishing companies, together with uh, companies from other uh, countries, they committed to voluntarily stop fishing in the buffer zones around the breeding colonies of penguins uh, during the penguin breeding season uh, for the purpose to protect the Antarctic wildlife. And uh, when this commitment was made, there was only one Chinese company in this uh, uh, association of responsible Creole harvesting company. And now there are three uh, Chinese companies in this association. So this is a big progress from the private sector. Um, for the future, um, where, how will China's Antarctic Creole fisheries uh, develop in the future? I think there are many uh, questions. Uh, challenges, but also uh, opportunities. Um, uh, so uh, one problem is climate change, considering the uh, uh, Antarctic is uh, the frontier of climate change and crow fisheries is happening in this uh, vulnerable area. So how uh, the creole industry, creole sector, uh, the fishing sector can uh, tackle the challenge from the climate sectors through cooperation with other uh, players. Also, how can the crow fish, uh, the, the fishing sectors actively and constructively participate in the marine biodiversity protection uh, to re, uh, rebuild our relationship with the nature? Also, um, uh, 
the fish, how can the fishing uh, industry to practice the ecological civilization uh, concept and the China's uh, concept of community of shared future for mankind and the brain time community, community with shared future. And another opportunity is from the uh, fisheries sector uh, with, uh, with the, the fishing uh, department is, is developing their 14th five-year plan. And we noticed there is new word uh, in their uh, direction. It's called high quality. So what is high quality? Uh, how can the fisheries uh, activity to be high quality in the future? I think there are many uh, opportunities from this. That's all of my presentation. Uh, that was great. Um, if anyone has any questions, please put them in the chat box or send them to us on Facebook. But um, Joe, wait, on the last statement that you just made about the distant water fishing and the new regulations, I, that reflects some research you had done before about trash fish, for sure. Um, do they also apply to the krill in Antarctica? And why is krill so interesting as, as, a, as something to fish? Oh, Joe Wei, we can't hear you. Sorry, um, it should be okay now. Yeah, I think the main um, motivation for fishing for krill is because uh, currently more than 90% um, of the, world, the, the world's fish stocks are either overfished or uh, fully fished. And the krill is classified as uh, one of the few of uh, fish stocks that is underfished or underexploited. That means if the fishing industry, they uh, hope to uh, have, have to generate more production, um, krill is maybe a species that can pro provide more production. And with this uh, uh, information, there are many incentives to given to the uh, krill industry uh, from both the central and the local government. Uh, for example, incentives are given to the uh, uh, vessel building. Uh, so in the past few years, uh, krill fishing companies has built uh, more uh, uh, fish, uh, krill fishing vessels. Um, but, but if we look at um, the benefit, um, I think it's, uh, it's not very clear because uh, uh, maybe uh, the krill fishing um, business is not very profitable at this moment because most of the krill uh, fishing products are uh, used as feed. Uh, as uh, what you mentioned, Marcy, the trash fish and uh, fish meal, krill, most of the krill products are uh, krill meal and used to produce feed, uh, um, to feed the, like feed fish or feed uh, the uh, farmed uh, animals. Uh, only a few of them are used to produce uh, krill oil. Krill oil is a nutrition uh, supplement to, uh, products for human use. Krill oil is a high value product, but uh, only a few of them are, are, only a few of the krill uh, are used to produce krill oil at this moment. So um, uh, it's uh, probably not a very profitable business at this moment. Well, and I, I do want to point out that there's always this lens on what China's doing with fishing. But actually, if you look over the life of Antarctica and the Southern Ocean, Norway has actually fished probably at least five times more krill over the life of the Southern Ocean fishing than China has. It's just that China in the last few years has been increasing much more rapidly than any other country as in a lot of fishing issues. So uh, it's a difficult decision, I know, for them to balance out that desire for fishing. I guess that we're hoping that it, the, as you're saying, Joe, if, if it's not that important of a fish, maybe, uh, maybe those, maybe China could see switching uh, to protecting Antarctica over fishing. Yeah, um, 
I think, Marcy, you, uh, when you uh, have, have uh, had the starting, you said uh, China maybe can put aside its fishing interest and protect, protect the Antarctic. I think uh, China doesn't need to uh, put aside its fishing interest because um, a healthy ocean is the basic for everything. We are all connected. Um, and uh, uh, through protecting um, Antarctic, actually the fisheries uh, can also benefit from, from it. Um, uh, China has, uh, I mean, many Chinese fishing companies has built new uh, fishing vessels, new Korea fishing vessels, and the Korea fishing vessels are, uh, are very modern. Uh, they, they put a lot of money to, to build these vessels. Also, uh, definitely, they don't want them to be uh, um, to be useless in the in, in very soon in the future. Also, uh, long-term sustainability is uh, becomes a very important issue to the uh, fisheries industry. And also recently, China um, issued a, a white paper of its decent water fishery. And from that white paper, uh, you can notice many words of uh, like uh, long-term sustainability and high quality. So how to achieve these goals, I think uh, marine protected area has been uh, proven um, by the science as a very effective tool to uh, protect the, uh, the the, the biodiversity protect the ecosystem and uh, and um, provide um, uh, more fisheries benefits. So these these two things, fisheries and marine protected areas, they are not contradict with each other. Actually, they can go hand by hand. Yeah. Wow. Well said. Exactly. All right. Well, the, I think that transitions us well over to Jiliang, who can talk, Jiliang Chen, again, from Green Innovation Hub, um, who can talk to us a little bit about Camelar, what happened during the meetings this year, and what he thinks might happen next year. Uh, can you see the slides? Okay. Yep. Yeah. Uh, thank you, Marcy. Um, China is a late comer to Antarctica. It did not have any activities in Antarctica until uh, in 1980 when the two Chinese scientists, Zhang Qingsong and uh, Dong Zhaoqian were invited by the Australian Antarctic Division to, uh, they landed uh, in the uh, Antarctica as the first two Chinese. Mm, after they soon built their first station at the King George Island, the, the Great War Station. And after that, China became the consultative party to the Antarctic Treaty in 19, uh, 1985. Uh, surprisingly, China did not uh, join the Commission for the Conservation of uh, Mar Antarctic Marine Living Resources right away. Though China was quite interested in the quail resources, I was in uh, elementary in the elementary school. I and I read things about China's Antarctic ex expedition, and the quill was mentioned. I still remember that, but yeah, I surprised that China joined the camera so late. Uh, on the Chinese media, the stars for the China, China's polar expedition are the, the uh, snow dragon vessels and the snow eagle planes. The uh, fishermen are, uh, as always, not uh, not being noticed. Seems, uh, yeah. Uh, but look at uh, the, this vessel. This is the vessel uh, uh, Joey just showed showed you. It's a cutting uh, edge. Uh, it's a newly built fishing vessel, uh, especially designed for uh, cutting uh, with cutting edge technology to catch and the process krill. It just finished its first trial in Antarctica. So these are the, the, the backgrounds of China's uh, participation uh, in uh, Kamala. And um, I think uh, China joined the commission. China has become more and more vocal in the meetings and the, the size of the delegation has also uh, be in, been growing steadily. Uh, so you can see from the chat, uh, the in the, the from here the number of the delegates in the delegation, and then you can the other lines are the numbers of the 
paper, working papers and background papers. Um, so if you can see in the 2019, there has there was a drastic increase of uh, papers. Uh, some submitting working papers normally requires collaboration among uh, different ministries. It uh, indicates there are some mechanism to work together to providing uh, advice or uh, proposals to, to the commission. So it's an important indicator for uh, the country's capacity of engaging the process. Uh, and also uh, China's participation in at Camera is uh, beyond the, uh, the meeting room. Uh, China's uh, fishing vessels uh, participated in the joint uh, crew service that informs the Camera's uh, management decisions. And uh, uh, China also is fulfilling its responsibility as a port state in 2017, it uh, confiscated uh, 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 illegal uh, catches from uh, the vessel Andre Dogov in, Yant in Yantai and uh, they auctioned those, those catches and uh, donated the, the money uh, to, to Cam Camera. And this is a picture taken by Joey and uh, and the uh, China also uh, support China uh, Camera's scientific works. Something uh, because, for example, they hosted the, uh, the working group meetings in Qingdao, and of course, China supported the the, the Ross CMPA. Um, but um, but the, the the MPA. Uh, discussion as uh, as many people know, it's quite quite uh, di difficult. Uh, and China is more famous for its opposition to the MPAs. Uh, this game is a perfect illustration of how the MPA discussion was uh, in camera. It is um, illustrated by uh, my colleague Ric Ricardo Rora. Uh, Many arguments has have been repeated again and again, which may made people feel quite uh, frustrated. So China has four more main uh, arguments opposing uh, MPA proposals. The first one is about the right to fish. The second one is about the uh, strong scientific justification. The third one is about the research and the monitoring needs to be uh, specific and uh, practical. The fourth one is about the duration uh, of the of MPA designation. China has been using these arguments for a very long time. It has, uh, but it has never uh, proposed any specific technical suggestions for a specific revision for those. Uh, uh, proposals. So those so these problems illustrate the uh, uh, reveals that the, the difficulty is within the China or at the Chinese side. First, uh, there is a mismatch. Uh, the MPA is considered as a political issue because it's about the ocean and about uh, connected. It's and Antarctica, there are still uh, territorial claims. So it is con considered as a political issue, but it's only being dealt at the uh, technical level. So there's a mismatch. We have to, uh, to figure out how to do that. And uh, this, it is also, uh, China does not have the, still does not have an Antarctic strategy or law on Antarctica. So it is very difficult for the officials to seek uh, political guidance uh, other than their uh, superior. Uh, due to logistical reasons, China did not have much uh, marine uh, ecosystem research before, but this is going to change with the uh, new uh, capacity, including the new icebreaker and the new 
a station at Rossi. The new station will be specific, will be dedicated to the uh, uh, ecos marine ecosystem research. And the, uh, there is a still a lack of capacity to uh, engage the process. I talked about the, the numbers of the submitting papers. China still, the, China has the almost the biggest uh, uh, delegation, but the, it's the number of its papers is still compared to other uh, countries is still, still quite uh, few. Um, and uh, the, and the, the fishing expertise is not balanced uh, with the conservation expertise in the uh, delegation. And the Ministry of Foreign Affairs does not attach uh, great importance to, to camera. They have more important things to worry about. Uh, so looking forward, I, st I think there are still uh, reasons to be optimistic. Uh, Zhou Wei has already mentioned a few. I think the political momentum uh, connecting, connected with the narrative of ecological civilization and the uh, human community of shared future is a very important, uh, very important in the future for, for, for China's participation. And uh, the newly established uh, ministry, it's not new, it has been there for two, two years. The, the Ministry of Natural Resources uh, could bring a more uh, balanced approach, balanced approach to uh, in China's participation. Uh, before the administration, there, there was only uh, the administration for Antarctic and Arctic, uh, uh, to under the state ocean Atomic administration, and the, now they have uh, 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 also the Department for International Collaboration also send people to the delegation. So I think it, it, there will be a, a more balanced approach, and the, the new facilities will also allow more marine science to support decision making in Kamala. And the, the uh, so we also mentioned the CBD will play a, an important role and as well as the 50, fifth five year plan. So in the end, I would like to share this photo. I took this photo when, when the Ross CMPA was adopted and China was making an intervention of congratulation. So you can see the laughs of, I, I call them the laughs of relief so I, I'm still hopeful to see that laugh again. So thank you. That was well said. Thank you, Jillian. Um, so we, you ended it on that note of hopeful, which I agree with, but maybe you could expand a little bit on what happened during these meetings, because there, there were some issues about a Russian flagged vessel uh, that was unre that was IUU unregulated and unreported, that, and it it seemed as though the, there wasn't a willingness to 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 criticize that, and they didn't really talk about the MPAs. Was it simply because it was an online meeting, and maybe China wanted to wait a year for the UN Biodiversity Conference? They just had too much going on with the U.S. elections, 14th year plan that the this Camelar just got pushed aside a bit? Uh, thank you, uh, Marcy. The uh, online meeting was indeed uh, quite uh, fr frustrated. And um, uh, Russia was trying to make the meeting as informal as possible. So it is very hard for the scientific committee to give and provide any, to provide more uh, scientific advice to the commission. Mm. Yeah, the conservation groups are quite uh, disappointed. Not we, we understand there's a it's a difficult time and it's a virtual meeting. Uh, uh, and the, the the MPA was in the other matter. It was in the that doesn't give much time to discuss. But we still disappointed that the, so so much time has been spent on the 
IUU suspect, suspected the IUU case, um, fishing vessel Poma, the Russian flagged uh, vessel Poma. Poma. Uh, it's a uh, uh, very big, uh, the Russian vessel, fishing vessel Poma was photographed by a uh, patrolling uh, New Zealand patrol airplane uh, in a closed area. And uh, New Zealand asked the Russia to uh, do something to the investigation. And uh, the Russian provided the, the evidence provided is simply a, a dot in the map saying our vessel is not in the place you, you photographed it. it. And uh, maybe your the, the GPS uh, coordinates in your photograph is falsified. It's a very strong, strange uh, accusation that a gov to accuse a government plane to make uh, fake photos uh, to um, to stop a fish vessel from fishing. And the, the, the problem is Russian did not uh, Rush, the, uh, Russia did not provide the VMS data of that vessel that could demonstrate it, the real track um, or travel trace uh, to in, in, in this debate. So the situation is very very strange. The many uh, the countries did uh, many members did uh, criticize uh, uh, Russia on this issue. And, but uh, they could not. They 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 could not either neither list it as a, a an contract party IUU vessel, nor um, uh, f forbid it to fish next year. Yeah, I think it's pretty frustrating for everybody. Um, do you think that given that China? Um, you know, made, for instance, the climate change commitments for 2050 so that they, they took essentially a, a, a stance there um, raising, you know, and I don't know how involved the Ministry of Natural Resources was on that, for instance, but do you think that that kind of leads the pathway for beautiful China for these things becoming, you know, more political and becoming more part of the Foreign Ministry. Mm -hmm. I think uh, the mm, political will to um, to uh, engage uh, the multilateral environmental process is there, uh, but for the political leaders, they uh, lack technical options on the. Uh, how to engage. Uh, as I said in my uh, presentation, China made only uh, generic uh, arguments against the proposals. They do not have the capacity to make technical uh, suggestions to accommodate their concerns. I think that's a key uh, capacity that you need to engage this process. And I think China is, has seen this gap and the try and is working on uh, to improve the, the the internal mechanisms and uh, build the internal capacity to fill this gap. Okay, and and uh, this is just kind of a final wrap up question, either for you or for Wei. Then you know it was exciting to see. Um, this research paper that was led by Chinese scientists that came out demonstrating that krill was um, migrating, right? It's, it's migrating into the cooler waters. So that should be a sign of things to come, that there's more research coming out. And, you know, just curious if you see uh, more of this kind of research either out of Qingdao or other groups within China, you know, kind of what do you see in terms of more research coming out from that? Uh, from my side, I, uh, because I have been following this since 20, 
uh, 12. At the time, there were no literature, no, no nothing about it you can find in, in China. But now, if you uh, look at the CNKI, the, the publication database, there are many um, uh, sci natural science, science and uh, social science paper, still more social science, science paper there. Um, and then, uh, and maybe Joe Wei, you have a comment too. What, why don't we wrap it up? Do, do either one of you guys have any concluding uh, remarks that you want to make uh, for, for maybe crossing our fingers for next year and <laughs> what might happen? Uh, Julian, I'll let you go first. <laughs> uh, I am uh, optimistic. Uh, and uh, uh, re realistic, um, but I am more optimistic now because when I, in 2016, when I uh, went to the camera, I just did not have any hope. I just thought, just get my job done and go home. And then, then the Rossi MPA was adopted. So, and the think of the, think of the Antarctic Treaty, it was signed uh, signed today, 61 years ago, at the peak of the Cold War. And to think of the uh, mining treaty was signed, almost si signed then, changed to an environment treaty for a protocol for environmental uh, protection. So yeah, we, we have, so I'm not more optimistic now. Um, yeah, oh, thank you, Marcy. Thank you, Julian. Um, yeah, I think uh, I have been asked a lot of times uh, why China is against the MPA. Um, so clearly political, uh, uh, political issues is a um, um, big um, a problem there, but Antarctic is not only uh, politics. Um, as uh, the research you brought up, uh, Marcy, it was a joint research uh, conducted by Chinese um, scientists, Chinese scientific uh, research vessels, and uh, scientists from other countries. Um, so I think there's a lot, uh, a lot more. Uh, of work we can do uh, in um, Antarctic together and with uh, cooperation with joint effort. Uh, I'm, I'm also very, uh, with uh, this spirit of joint effort and the cooperation, I'm, I'm also very optimistic for the, uh, uh, for the future. That's great news. Hey, um, we've had a late edition question from Alex Liu. Le Alex, do you want to turn on your um, mute and uh, who has a question? Yeah. Please, hey, hello. Yeah. Hi. Yeah, hello. Hi, Messi and Joey and Jilian. Yeah, it's, it's nice to meet you here, email with you, and uh, thank you for the sharing uh, tonight. I just saw the, 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 the picture from Jilian, so I just joined the meeting and have a little interest about it. Uh, actually, I mean, I'm not a, the professionist uh, in this area, but just a, a, a figure or a data just to get my interest that I saw from the presentation of Zhou Wei that uh, in, in a chart, there is a uh, creo fishing and I saw that Norway, Norway have a very high percentage with that one. So it, it, I, mean, I don't know that before, it impressed me a lot. So is there some uh, reasons on behind, I mean, why no, Norway have such kind of big uh, percentage there? Because usually we know that uh, Norway is a small country and it's an Arctic country, not an Antarctic country. And uh, so as a reason I ask that is firstly, it's impressed me a lot. The second thing is that because if we know the reason on behind that, maybe we can follow up that reason to make some prediction or get some ideas. Okay. If China will follow up that things or if China will not do that things. Just an idea. Uh, thank you. If, if, if we can have some, if we, I can get some information from you about that. Uh, thank you, Alex. Um, I'm uh, really not an 
uh, expert on why uh, Norway uh, is the top one. But I think there are uh, there were a lot um, a lot of ups and downs for every country in the cruel fishing history. Uh, I remember, if I remember correctly, at the very beginning, um, um, it's the Su, uh, it's it's not Russia, but it was it was the Su, uh, previous Russia. They had a big uh, catch amount of cruel in the in the history, and um, Japan also used to have a big catch in of, of cruel in Antarctica, but now Japan is. Uh, has, has decreased a lot. So every country has its ups and downs. Um, I, I think your question is very interesting. Maybe uh, we can look further into this uh, angle in the future. Uh, maybe I can jump in. Uh, mm -hmm. the Norway has only two vessels, but they catch the most, the biggest number of crew because they employed uh, a very uh, advanced technology, not to, uh, because the Chinese vessels uh, use a trawl, just a net, uh, to catch the the krill. But the Norwegian use a pump, pump with a trawl to to catch. Uh, that's very very efficient. Uh, and uh, the newly commissioned vessel I and Joe Wei showed in our slides is also equipped equipped with such a uh, technology. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for the share. Yeah, because I really feel impressed because we know that Norwegian is a, Norway is a very well developed country. Um, it's not like a poor country that need this kind of resources to maintain the development mm -hmm. of the society. Oh. It's, yeah, it's, yeah, it's really, yeah, yeah, maybe so we can, the, I think they, that. they have a quite uh, profitable industry on the krill oil as a new nutrition supplement. So it, ah, they see. produce it uh, as, a, as a fish oil, it's a different kind of fish oil. So with ah, okay. DHA, so it's got very, very high value on, on the market. Okay, cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah, good to know that. Yeah, thank you for the point, yeah, for the comment. Yeah, I, I suspect it might also, right, they have a huge um, aquaculture industry too. So I suspect they must be using it for that as well. So even mm -hmm. though, but it is a really good point for such a small country, right? Why? Yeah. <laughs> but I think it, and what's interesting too is that even with China as a big country, but I do think, and I think Joe Wei and Julian correct me if I'm wrong though, that all the krill really it'll either go for the krill oil and the health supplements, or it goes to for agriculture um, feed, and a lot of that. China is the largest importer and exporter of fish in the world. So it, it doesn't necessarily go to feed people in China, but it goes to feed the, the large fishing industry that China has, which that was a surprise to me too. <laughs> Statistic, so. All right, well, uh, let's, um, if there are no other questions, then let's wrap it up here. And uh, thank you so much everybody for staying up so late in Asia time and for uh, Zhou Wei and uh, Jilian for, uh, for your in very interesting presentations and most importantly for all of your hard work in uh, protecting our oceans and protecting the seas. So thank you. Thank you, Marcy. Thank you. Thank you, Marcy. Thank you, everyone. All right. Good night. Good night. Good night. All right. Good night. Bye.